Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Uh, my dear respected um, brothers and uh, sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, today we will continue, inshallah, the program that we have started, the series, if you like, uh, on the history uh, of uh, Islam. The history of Islam, until now, we have had the first two lessons. We had the first one, which was a general introduction about history and why uh, study uh, history. Uh, and today we are going to talk about, uh, sorry, the second session was about the rightly guided khalifs, the Khulafa al-Rashidun, and we spoke about the reign of uh, Abu um, Bakr radiyallahu an, and then Umar ibn al-Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, and Ali ibn Abi Talib, and we said we ended with uh, al-Hasan ibn Ali, uh, and then from then it moved on to a new type of dynasty uh, which is the Umayyad dynasty. We can call it a dynasty because dynasty means basically a rule which becomes hereditary within a family and this is essentially what happened here with this period of rule. So inshallah today we're going to be talking about the Umayyad dynasty. It is also called al Khilafa. it's also known as the Umayyad uh, khilafa and the leaders are sometimes also known as the Khalifa because the Khalifa has become like a title uh, for uh, the, the, the leaders. So that's what we're going to talk about inshallah uh, ta'ala today. So the period actually started after the murder of Ali ibn Abi Talib. We said last time in our talk that Ali radiallahu an was murdered by the Khawarij, the Kharijites, those who were um, were Muslims uh, in the sense that they claimed Islam, but they were they had a very warped uh, and a, almost a very violent version of Islam. They thought they looked at Islam with a very narrow uh, perspective, and therefore they considered that uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib was not uh, worthy of being a leader, and even probably considered him not even a Muslim. Uh, for certain reasons, and so they uh, ended up killing him. Uh, his son Al Hassan ibn Ali, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he um, took charge uh, after Ali. So allegiance was given to him, bay'ah was given to him uh, to become the next Khalifa, and that's when he started the Khilaf, and we'll talk a little bit about that, inshallah. So if you want to look about, just try and understand how this all fits in, you can see from this um, family tree that uh, the Abdul Manaf, uh, who is the, we can use a, uh, a pointer here, um, so Abdul Manaf, uh, is one of the uh, one of the leaders of um, uh, Quraysh, uh, uh, and you can see here it goes back a few times. So he has son Hashim and uh, Abd uh, Shams. Uh, he also has uh, an uncle, called, uh, also a son called Al Muttalib, which uh, we will not mentioned just yet. Uh, so then you have from Hashim, Abdul Muttalib, Abdullah, and then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you see that is the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu going back to Abd Manaf. But at the same time, Abd Manaf also has a son called Abd Shams, and he, he has a son called Umayya. And Umayya has, again, a number of children. One of them is Abu al-As, and one is called Harb. Abu al-As has a child called Affan, another one called Al-Hakam, 
and Affan has a has a son called Uthman, who is Uthman ibn Affan. So Uthman ibn Affan, the righteous Sahaba and the third Khalifa of the Prophet وسلم, you can see he is from the clan or the sub-clan of the Umayyads. Um, and uh, he is related to the Prophet وسلم, through this uh, lineage that you can see here. So although Uthman Allah, was the Khalifa, it wasn't really a big, it wasn't really part of the Umayyad dynasty in the sense because at that time, remember, these were the rightly guided Khulafa, they were following principles uh, of uh, in terms of Islam and in terms of the um, passing on of the leadership, not as a dynasty and a hereditary. When uh, and you can see here is Muawiyah, who was the first of the Umayyads, and he is the son of Abu Sufyan, uh, the son of Harb, and, and then goes back to Umayyah. Uh, so uh, we can move on. And here, when we look at this other aspect, uh, this next following tree, so you can also allows us to see basically the Umayyads, how they were. We have Muawiyah here, who is the, um, the main uh, first person, if you like, that he passes on to his son Yazid, and then we have Muawiyah ibn uh, Yazid and Muawiyah. Uh, there is a, a little bit of an intercession here, which we'll talk about, inshallah, but then later we have this guy called Marwan, who you saw in the previous uh, slide. Uh, Marwan is here, so he is the cousin of Uthman and through him we have this new lineage of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan and then later Abdul Malik's children uh, essentially are the ones who take a, a, a large period of the Khilafah uh, at one point uh, Abu Marwan Abdul Aziz which we'll talk about and then later goes back to another descendant of Marwan through Muhammad who is the last of the Khulafa of uh, the Umayyad. So this period includes, these are the main names in Kiriz, and you can see uh, the number of years, yani Muawiyah ibn Sufyan ruled for around 20 years, which we'll talk about that, inshallah. Abdullah ibn Zubair is inserted here, uh, even though he isn't actually one of the Umayyads, but we'll talk about him, inshallah. Uh, we have then Marwan ibn Hakam, who uh, fought against Abdullah ibn Zubair, uh, and he didn't last long either. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, one of the most prominent Umayyad rulers, and he lasted again for around 20 years. And then uh, his sons, Al Walid, Sulaiman, and then his nephew comes in, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Uh, and then that was later followed by his other son, Yazid, and then Hisham. And then it goes down to the grandsons, if you like, Al Walid ibn Yazid. So this is Al-Walid, who is the son of this Yazid. Uh, and then Yazid, who is his cousin. So this isn't, um, this is Yazid, who is the cousin of uh, Al-Walid ibn Yazid. And then we have his brother Ibrahim, and then later on uh, Marwan. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, in a uh, um, uh, in a hadith, he said, the prophethood will be amongst you as long as Allah wills it for it for wills for it to be. Then Allah will raise it, then it will be a khilafah on the methodology of the Prophet as long as Allah wills for it to be. Then Allah Ta'ala will raise it, then it will become a biting kingship as long as Allah wills it. So you see in this hadith and indeed the following hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu already described that there will be a khilafah for 30 years and then after that it's going to change into a, a kingship, it's going to change into a monarchy where uh, it becomes hereditary and obviously the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Allah has shown him aspects of the unseen and he is telling us here the prophecy about what will uh, happen. Uh, the, the period of Khilafah of 30 years ends actually with Al-Hasan, uh, as we will mention. Al-Hasan ibn Ali was given the allegiance, but he saw that during the time of his father, there was so much disunity, there was so much bloodshed, 
uh, amongst the Muslims, unfortunately, a lot of this civil war, internal battles after the, the initial, uh, if you like, neo kharijites they killed Uthman radiallahu an uh, in Medina. This set off a whole um, trail of incidents which led to uh, fighting within the Muslims. Uh, and ultimately, this was between Ali initially and uh, Zubair and Talha and Aisha radiallahu So all prominent Sahaba later on, they moved to a fight between Ali and Muawiyah. And then from that, you have the Khawarij also formed their kind of a battle um, arena and they started to fight each other. So Al Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu anh, he, uh, he said that, you know, let's move to reconciliation. And his moving to uh, reconciliation was basically to see uh, what can be done, um, um, what can be done uh, in the sense that uh, to bring things together, what can be done to bring things together. So he came up with this idea that, look, I'm going to step down from the Khilafah. I'm no longer going to be the Khalifa. I'm going to pass it on to Muawiyah, who is effectively the other warring faction. He will take charge. And then the agreement was, or the deal was, that when Muawiyah passes away, then it will go back to al Hassan ibn Ali. So it's like a very good compromise to bring people together, let's stop fighting together. And indeed, that's what happened. He stepped down to Muawiyah, uh, and this was known as Am Jama'ah, the year of the congregation. People had come together after uh, a few years uh, of fighting. However, um, uh, sorry, before that, the Prophet had already prophesied this as well. He said, in the Ibn had the Sayyid, when he was talking about Hassan, he said, in the Ibn had the Sayyid, he, this here, my son, is a master, and on his hands, Allah will reconcile between two great Muslim uh, entities because they were fighting each other. And indeed, this prophecy came to true as Al Hassan stepped down. He handed it down to Muawiyah with the agreement that when Muawiyah dies, Al Hassan will take charge again. However, Al Hassan died before Muawiyah. Uh, may Allah be pleased with them both. They were both Sahaba, they were both companions of the Prophet. Some say that one of his wives, uh, Al Hassan, poisoned him under the illusion that Yazid, who was the son of Ma'a, would marry her after she killed her husband. This is what has been written in the books of history. And so therefore, he actually died before Ma'awi in the year uh, 51, which is effectively about nine years before Ma'awi passed away. So therefore, him taking the Khilafah after Ma'awi was no longer going to be an option. So Muawiyah became the Khalifa. He said, in some of the words that he said, that I continue to have ambitions for the Khilafa ever since the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, uh, Ya Muawiyah, idha malakta fa'ahsin. If you have sovereignty or if you are given sovereignty, then be good. And even the word, SubhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used the word malakta, which is almost like a derivative of the word malik, uh, which uh, is referring to uh, kinship. Uh, there is a question about, um, I think somebody's asking what does the, the term AH means. AH means after Hijrah, uh, which means basically after the, the Hijrah of the Prophet, which is what the Muslims started to use uh, ever since Umar عن, initiated the Hijri uh, calendar. As for uh, AD, then that refers to the period after. Uh, Isa alayhi salam uh, after Jesus alayhi salam, which is basically the Gregorian uh, calendar. Now, Muawiyah, one of them first, the first bid'ah, if you like, the first innovation that Muawiyah did amongst the Muslim women, that's why it became an Umayyad dynasty, was that he, and some say this was, you know, he was given this advice by. Uh, somebody called him Mughira ibn Shu'ab also that he said 
you saw all this disunity that happened before. They said, well, before I die, and then basically uh, people start arguing about who is going to become the next leader, uh, I'm going to make take this initiative to appoint my son, Yazid, as the next Khalifa and get all the Muslims to give him allegiance that when, you know, when Muawiyah passed away, Yazid will be the Khalifa. If you like, it was like a, a predetermined uh, next Khilafa so that the Muslims will not fight it amongst each other. So in a way, he had the right intention because he said by doing this, at least they won't be fighting each other. Uh, but it was uh, it was not how uh, you know the the Khilafah had been done until then, and some people even said to him, "If that is the case, then don't appoint your son. If you are worried that people will start have to have fighting and and etc., then why don't you appoint someone uh, who is not your son? Take it outside the family; it doesn't become hereditary." And here he tried to say, "Well." You know, after the generation of the Sahaba, the prominent Sahaba have gone, uh, who has remained? You know, it's just our children and their children. So, you know, why should their children be any deserving than, than our children, meaning uh, Yazid? And obviously that was a big error. Uh, it was to change the course of history. Uh, and he was to be blamed uh, for this by uh, many historians and scholars in the time. Uh, to come. It remains that Muawiyah was a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, and we hold all the companions in high esteem. We don't believe that they were genuinely malice in their behavior or that they were um, they intended corruption. Uh, but in this case, uh, it was a bad move. It wasn't a correct uh, perspective, as 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 a lot of the scholars have mentioned, because Yazid was not a companion. There were still other companions around of the Prophet ﷺ who emerged more deserving. Uh, even when he said, "I'm doing this in accordance to what um, Abu Bakr did and what Omar did," the Sahaba rejected him and they said, "Well, Abu Bakr neither did Abu Bakr nor Omar leave the Khilafah or." Uh, give the, if you like, the indication for anyone of their family. So basically, Muawiyah did this. Um, during his reign, there was peace. There was no internal fighting. We said that he ruled for about 20 years. So 20 years of peace and, if you like, uh, um, you know, um, no internal fighting. And this allowed them to uh, send armies out to, uh, to go out. And one of those armies was to attack. Constantinople, which was the headquarters, the big head capital of the Byzantine uh, Empire. Now, uh, Yazid was appointed during the life of Muawiyah. He didn't, didn't become the Khalif, but it was like promised to be the Khalif when uh, he, uh, when Muawiyah uh, passed away. And uh, even that time, there was discontent. People did not accept it, and the main people who opposed him were Abdullah ibn Zubair, who was uh, the son of Zubair ibn Awam, the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu and indeed he was also a Sahabi, the first of the Muhajirin to be born in Medina. We have al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu and the son of Ali and Fatima, and Abdullah ibn Omar ibn al-Khattab. These were the main three people who opposed, uh, and they were reluctant to give Bay'ah. As for Abdullah ibn Umar, then he was a man who didn't really have any like, political aspirations, if you like. Uh, he said, whatever people, whatever the people agree upon, then I'm going to be with the people. Don't, you know, don't expect me that I'm going to uh, try to break the ranks of the Muslim. However, Abdullah ibn Zubair and al Hussein, they didn't give the allegiance to Yazid, so they didn't accept him as the Khalifa. Abdullah ibn Zubair went to Mecca. Uh, and he found, if you like, uh, ground there. Al Hussein was still in Medina, and during his time, he, you know, he was invited by the people of Iraq. Remember, Iraq was, uh, especially Kufa, was the headquarters of where Ali of the Allah had moved um, the Khilafah. He had moved it to Al Kufa. He made that his base, and 
So uh, the people there had, if you like, more allegiance to Ali, being from the household of the Prophet Sallallahu and therefore here Al Hussein as well. So they invited Al Hussein to come over, come to us. We will support you. We will, uh, you know, give you the 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 the, uh, the aid that you need, and we can uh, we can oppose Yazid, who does not deserve to be the Khalifa. Uh, a lot of people advise Al Hussein do not go out. The people of Iraq cannot be relied on. Uh, but he eventually did go. I mean, again, we're not going to talk about this. It's a long story, and that was one of the unfortunate. Uh, consequences that happened in the history uh, of Islam and obviously during this time um, that Yazid during Yazid being enforced on the Muslim Ummah al Hussein of the Allah and rejected that he went to Iraq, the people of Iraq let him down uh, and because they, uh, they let him down this led to an army being sent out to come back and, and Hussein was here with his family, with his you know his immediate family. There was uh, there was a sh small number. I think some people say in the tens, yeah, and maybe sixty or seventy uh, of them. They weren't equipped. They weren't an army, etc. But they were attacked by uh, Yazid's um, forces, uh, and some people proceeded. And one of the guys he went and killed Al Hussein Ibn Ali on the day of Ashura, the tenth day of Muharram. Uh, which is the day that um, obviously it's a tragic day, but till today, you know, the, the Shia they uh, mourn Al Hussein on this day, and they even, I mean, part of the reason why they do the, um, the self harm uh, is due to the fact that they consider themselves as those who let down Al Hussein. And Al Hussein, they were supposed to give him victory, they were supposed to support him, they were supposed to say to him, come. When he came, they let him down, and that's why they have that uh, beating, uh, you know, on themselves, because uh, they say we let Al Hussein uh, down. This was an unfortunate reality. Some people say that Yazid didn't. Uh, order the killing of uh, Al Hussein, uh, and he didn't, uh, you know, and he was actually saddened by this, uh, by this, uh, because he just wanted him to be captured or to be, you know, the, the, the rebellion of Al Hussein to be uh, quashed. Uh, but Allah, this is, uh, you know, this is something that happened. And, and it's still his army, uh, he is going to be responsible uh, for that. Uh, this was one of the unfortunate things that happened. Also, another two unfortunate things happened that during the time of Yazid. One was the attack on Medina. So again, people of Medina were angered by Yazid, his policies, his behavior, his deen, or lack of deen, if you can say. Uh, and also what happened to Al Hussein, so they rejected Yazid. It's almost like they say, we, you know, we, we no longer accept you as the Khalifa. Uh, they rebelled against him. He saw this as a revolt, so again, he sent an army to quash them. And in fact, Al Medina was attacked. More than 300 of the companions of the Prophet in Medina were killed. Uh, and uh, not only that, but for three days, Al-Medina was considered like open ground. All the, the army of Yazid, you know, they ambushed, they, they, they pillaged, they stole, uh, and so on. So it was really a devastating kind of, uh, an, an, an appalling kind of attack to happen to the people of Medina. These are the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and ultimately the families uh, therein. Not only that, but if you know, when I said Abdullah ibn Zubair also rejected the leadership of Yazid, he didn't give him allegiance, he had the backing of the people in Mecca. So again, the, uh, Yazid sent an army uh, to go and quash him. This ended up by attacking Mecca with catapults. Uh, and so Mecca was under attack. However, they didn't manage to conquer Mecca. Abdullah ibn Zubair remained there. And Yazid actually died 
before Mecca was taken from Abdullah ibn Zubayr. Now what happened is Yazid said, I'm going to appoint, because you know, it's become a hereditary now, he has appointed his son Muawiyah, so this is Muawiyah II, uh, to be the next Khalifa. He wasn't all too keen on being a leader, but he actually became a Khalifa. He was ill, uh, he didn't leave a successor, and so he didn't last long, I, just a few months, maybe six months, less than six months. And they said to him, why don't you leave a successor? He said, well, I didn't taste its sweetness, meaning the sweetness of the Khilafah being in charge. Why should I burden myself with the bitterness? He obviously saw what happened to his father and how that was bitter. And then so he just didn't uh, leave anybody behind. And here a void developed. When a void developed, Abdullah ibn Zayr said, well, there's no Khalifa now. You know, it's no longer Yazid. Uh, Muawiyah, who was, again, Muawiyah II, was also dead. So he calls for the Khilafah. He gets a lot of traction. Many people accepted him, especially in Iraq, Yemen, and Arabia, etc. Uh, he, therefore, uh, according to many historians, was the rightful Khalifa. So he was the true Khalifa. Uh, and he proceeds to rebuild the Kaaba because the Kaaba, some of the walls of the Kaaba war were demolished by the attack uh, that came. He rebuilds it uh, in a way which was on the foundations of Ibrahim because he heard from his mother, who happens to be the wife, uh, the sister of Aisha. So Aisha was, was Abdullah's auntie. And the Prophet said in a famous hadith said to Aisha, had it not been that your, uh, your family were uh, your family, Quraysh, were new to Islam, I would have demolished the Kaaba and rebuilt it on the proper foundations of Ibrahim because the Kaaba currently, as you can see, it's like a, it's almost like a square cube. But the original design of the Kaaba was that it's like a rectangle, cuboid, and uh, the area which is called, called the Hijr, the room of, of, of Ismail, which is like that semicircular, uh, place that was actually part of the whole Kaaba construction initially. But when Quraysh uh, rebuilt the Kaaba during the time of Rasul, they didn't build it fully because they didn't have enough money, so they ended up building it in the format uh, that was there. Now that the Kaaba had been demolished. Abdullah said, Let me rebuild it to how was described by his. Uh, by the Prophet Sallallahu to his auntie Aisha, and so he rebuilt it in that uh, in that format. However, Abdullah uh, was let down by his followers, and Mecca was attacked again, and he was killed and crucified in the year 73 after Hijrah. But this was like around um, 11 years for him being a Khilafah. So anyway, during his time, if you look at this map, you can see that the areas marked in blue uh, was the areas which uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair had allegiance. Uh, this is, you know, the areas of uh, Medina, Mecca, these all called Hijaz areas. And the ones which are light blue were, if you like, they had an inclination to Abdullah ibn Zubair. The pink territory was where the remnants of the Umayyads were, remnants meaning um, what had been left by Muawiyah ibn Yazid, the son of uh, Muawiyah. So, and the green uh, area was basically the area that a third claim, if you like, had come out for the Khilafah from the lineage of Ali, somebody called Muhammad ibn al Hanafiya, who was also the son of Ali, but not. Um, not the full brother of Al Hussein. So that was the green area, is in the area of Iraq and 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 and, and the like. And the yellow area was a, th a, th a fourth area, which was the basically the Kharijites, who had also had uh, strength and traction uh, as well. Now, when Abdullah bin Zubayr was in charge, uh, another guy called Marwan, who we had mentioned before, uh, he. Uh, thought that actually no, why is uh, you know Abdullah ibn Zubayr, so other people said to him, you should be the Khalifa and so he ended up uh, also announcing the Khilafah, so you can see these different factions are all fighting 
or the Khilafa, Abdullah ibn Zubair is the rightful Khalifa. Marwan starts to fight him, and when he dies a year later, uh, he uh, was, uh, you know, he, he, his son becomes the, the Khalifa. Uh, just here shows you where Marwan is. We talk about Marwan ibn al Hakam. Uh, he, his son becomes Khalifa Abdul Malik. Sorry, his son also announces or, or claims to be Khalifa Abdul Malik. He rebels against Abdullah, who is the rightful Khalifa. And so, therefore, he, this is when we talked about in the previous slide that uh, he, uh, Mecca was attacked the second time uh, by Abdul Malik. So, the first time was by Yazid, the son of Muawiyah. Uh, this time it was attacked by Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Uh, and by his uh, lieutenant, uh, Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, one of the biggest evils uh, in the history of Islam, one of the, the, the mo most dreadful tyrants uh, and renowned for this. And he again demolishes uh, Mecca. Uh, this time he says, uh, let me rebuild the Kaaba the way it was before. Because now he's saying to Abdullah bin Zubair, he messed up the Kaaba, he's changed it. So they went and rebuilt it for a second time, but now they rebuilt it according to how Quraysh had built it because they didn't trust that uh, Abdullah bin Zubair, who they considered the enemy, uh, as building it in a right uh, way. Uh, the strange thing is when Abdul Malik uh, what, saw the attack of Yazid the first time, he objected. He said, how can somebody attack Mecca? And he was objecting to it. Yet when he became the Khalifa, he did the same. Uh, Abdul Malik had about 17 uh, children, and he actually was one of the Fuqaha of Medina. This was quite a surprising thing that Abdul Malik was actually a, a, a righteous person initially. Uh, he was a worshiper. He was one of the Fuqaha, one of the jurists, one of the learned. Uh, of Medina, but he became in authority and that affected him dramatically and, and changed him. He was also the guy who forged the, the, the golden coin, which is the famous one here, which you're going to see has La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, La ilaha illallah wa la sharika la, and also it has uh, Surah Al Ikhlas, Qul Hu Allahu Ahad uh, as well. Uh, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan has a brother called Abdul Aziz. Uh, his father, uh, their father, Marwan, had said that, you know, again, so now you can see this dynasty, how it's working, is that one king, one monarch appoints the next one. He says, okay, if I die, this is who the next person is going to be uh, in charge. So Marwan says that, look, Abdu, that, uh, you know, essentially Abdul Malik is going to be in charge when Abdul Malik dies. Uh, his brother Abdul Aziz will become, but Abdul Aziz, um, he actually, uh, what Abdul Aziz does, uh, sorry, what Abdul Malik said, he wanted to remove his brother uh, from this uh, lineage of life. He wanted to leave with his children, but he wasn't sure, should I do this, should I not do this? In the end, what happened is, um, uh, Abdul Aziz ends up dying before Abdul Malik, and so he removes that dilemma for him because he was gonna he was gonna push his brother uh, aside. So, like today, you see some of the monarchs and dynasty, and this happens regularly. You can see this: the whole uh, children of Abdul Malik, each one uh, wants to remove that uh, lineage from his brother and put it with his sons. So instead of Next one uh, coming. So, like you see here, Al Walid was the first one uh, of his uh, children of Abdul Malik to become the Khalifa. His language was quite bad. He was a tyrant um, as well. But during his his reign, there was a massive expansion on the territory uh, of the the Umayyads, as we will talk about very shortly, inshallah. Uh, he again wanted to place the succession, if you like, to his sons, but then he was advised against this, uh, and uh, some of his lieutenants also, you know, advised it. So it was all internal struggle, you know, somebody opposed, they were going to probably get sacked later on, and so on. 
Uh, next guy after al Walid was Suleiman. He was a righteous man. He tried to do lots of good things. And he appointed Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, who is his, uh, his, if we have the, uh, have the, um, here you can see that on this, you can see um, that Abdul Aziz, um, so this is Abdul Aziz, he's the son of Abdul Malik. Remember that Marwan asked that Abdul Malik first, then Abdul Aziz, but Abdul Aziz died before Abdul Malik died. Then all these people came into play, uh, starting with Walid, then Suleiman. Suleiman then leaves, uh, points Omar, who is his, uh, his cousin, as a minister, and then later on he also uh, appoints him as um, his uh, crown uh, prince, if you like, uh, as, as appointed. But he did it in a way to avoid any suspicion from the or maybe the other, if you like, family, because they were not going to accept that. So he put basically put it in the paper. It was written and sealed, and they all accepted his appointment without knowing that he had actually put Omar ibn Abd Aziz as the first successor, but to uh, soften the blow, if you like, because now everybody's thinking uh, all the family of Abdul Malik, they're all, they're all going to lose the inheritance, if you like. He said that after Omar, it goes back to uh, um, the next one who is Yazid uh, ibn Abdul Malik. So if you like, and that softened the blow, if you like, uh, for them. Omar Abdul Aziz was a breath of fresh air. He was considered by uh, some of the scholars as the fifth of the righteous Khulafa. So some people said the Khulafa, Khamsa, Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali, and then Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. Because of his akhlaq, because of his justice, because of his fairness, um, he was the great grandson of Umar ibn Khattab from the mother's side. His mother was uh, Umm Asim, the daughter of Asim, the son of Umar. Uh, there's a famous story about this, but I think time does not allow us to talk about it. He established systems of looking after the need, wealth become ab abundant, and because of fairness and justice, you know, pe pe uh, things became much better in the uh, kingdom. But uh, he, fortunately, his rule didn't last long. It was two and a half years. Uh, it was said that he was he was poisoned, and even he said, "I know who when I was given that poison to to drink." So it goes back now to the sons of Abdul Malik. So it goes back to Yazid, who is the second. He started off well, uh, you know, trying to follow in the same footsteps of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. And some say that he remained like that for about 40 days, but then he went back and started to act as a king, returning all the, uh, the things that the Umayyad has taken before. Omar ibn Aziz tried to bring, but take all the injustices, remove all the injustices and give people back their rights. Yazid reversed that, if you like, and he had some internal rebellion. One of his governments tried to rebel against him. There was a need to quash him, and so on. You can see here also he wanted to make his son the Khalif, but again, his son was too uh, young. So instead, it became, again, within the writing scope, he decided that his brother would become the next Khalif, but it should go to his son after his brother, who is uh, Hisham. Hisham Abdul Malik also ruled for a long time, um, but he was much more lenient. He wasn't the tyrant that the others were. He disliked killing, disliked punishing people. After uh, Yazid passed away, he his son took it. Remember, Yazid said that it should go to my brother Hisham, then back to my son Al Walid. Uh, unfortunately, Walid was not a very good person. He was a transgressing sinner, drinking alcohol, etc. So he uh, wasn't accepted. And one of his uh, his cousin, in fact, one of his cousins, who is also who is called Yazid ibn Walid. So he is actually um, again, you can see from this diagram uh, who uh, he he was. So here you have. Um, Al Walid, then Suleiman, then we had Omar ibn Abd Aziz, then it went back to Yazid, then uh, Hisham, uh, who you can see he ruled for a very large time, about 19 years, and then 
um, Yazid passed it on to his son. So after Hisham, Walid, here, the cousin of Al-Walid, Yazid ibn Walid, he wasn't happy that this Khalifa now was a sinner, was drinking alcohol, was basically messing up with the deen. So he revolted against Walid, his cousin, and he killed him. He was then followed by his brother, uh, Ibrahim. Um, and so Yazid, uh, you know, he, he, he was also known as the lesser because he reduced, or the re reductioner, he reduced some of the wages and, and things like that. He was followed, again, he didn't last long. He was followed by his brother, Ibrahim, who also didn't last long because he was overthrown by another one. So you see now, unfortunately, this all internal uh, divisions happened. And so he ended up being overthrown by his uh, distant cousin, Marwan II, uh, who you can see again here uh, uh, on this, in this diagram. Uh, in this history, you can see Marwan is here, who is the son of Muhammad, the son of Marwan. So he is like uh, not the direct cousin. So he overthrows Ibrahim and he uh, becomes the Khalifa. Uh, and actually, he was quite, why did he overthrow Ibrahim? Because he was angry that the, the children of Al Walid, they overthrew their cousin Al Walid. So he, it was like a lot of internal uh, struggles. Now, he didn't last long, although, I mean, he lasted about five years, but he didn't really enjoy the Khilafah, if you like, because right from the beginning, I mean, he overthrew his predecessor and he was followed by lots of, um, you know, people overthrowing him and he, he fighting him. The Khawarij were fighting him on the one hand, but ultimately his end came uh, at the hands of the next dynasty who was to inherit the Islamic uh, uh, world, and that was the Abbasid dynasty, which we shall we'll talk about in the next uh, lecture. Now, during this time, uh, um, the, uh, the, the Umayyad dynasty grew very vastly, reached to very, uh, you know, wide areas. Most importantly, it uh, reached the areas of um, at the time of um, uh, Uthman radiallahu an, the, the Muslim navy was built. And so that was developed further by Muawiyah. And that's why they managed to take over uh, Cyprus and Sardinia and um, also reaching later on into Al-Andalus. Uh, which is modern day Spain that was at the time controlled by the Goths uh, and that inshallah we'll talk about that in a whole um, lecture uh, they reached as far as Armenia uh, and also Trans Trans uh, Transania which is the, what's known as the land beyond the river this is all mid-central Asia you know the areas of Bukhara and Samarkand and, and etc they reach into Afghanistan into Kabul and mm -hmm. uh, and also into India as Sindh and all that so you see that the Islamic conquest um, you know was expanding vastly in fact uh, some of the historians consider that the, this is considered one of the biggest in terms of territory in terms of land uh, one of the biggest dynasties that the world has ever known, history has ever known. Um, at one point, around probably the populations who were living in the Umayyad dynasty probably were around 30 to 40 percent of the world's uh, population. However, you know, it wasn't just expansions. The, uh, the, 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 there was a time where they had to be stopped, you know, they, they had to be like repelled. They were, they, they did have some defeats at some of the Indians. They had defeats at the, uh, in the north of Spain uh, in the Battle of Tours uh, by the Franks. Uh, there was defeat as well by the Chinese of the Tang Dynasty. Uh, also in North Africa, the Berbers rebelled at one stage. So you can see that it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just plain sailing. This map shows you the, uh, which we showed you last time, this is basically the map during the time of the Khilafah, at the end of the Khulafa al-Rashid, during the time of Umar and Uthman and Ali. 
this shows you a little bit more adoptive, the uh, dark, if you like, uh, the dark shade uh, is uh, where it ended at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is basically all of Arabia. The, um, then we have the lighter uh, shade of that, which extends into Iraq and uh, present day Iran, which is also Persia and North Africa. That is the, the Khilafah of Rashidin, which is the same as this green uh, picture that you can see here. And then the later sort of orangey color is basically where the Umayyad Khilafah reached. You can see it's as far as uh, Spain uh, and North Africa. And actually, this is not a complete picture because it, it does extend further east uh, into um, uh, into India and, and, and reaching uh, north as well into Central uh, Asia. Uh, some of the main achievements of the Umayyad, obviously they consolidated the nation, but this was the, this was effectively the act of Al-Hassan, who stepped down, uh, عن, but allowing this consolidation, which again the Prophet foresaw, foresaw and he prophesied. They were knocking back the Romans, the Persians were also being knocked out, and almost the Persians, you know, we can say that their, their, their time had almost come to an end. Uh, there's expansion of territory, as we mentioned, they established a lot of the state. We can see how Abdul Malik, he uh, was the guy who, for example, the coin, the first Muslim coin. Uh, a lot of the civil decor was established there. Knowledge expanded during the time of Umar Abdul Aziz. There was an eff eff effort to start compiling hadith. We know that during the time of Abu Bakr of Ilan and, and um, well, Abu Bakr, the Quran was collated. During the time of Uthman, it was all the other, you know, is, is done into one version to avoid disputes. So the Quran was completed. As for the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu it wasn't collated. And this is the, the efforts to collate it started in the time of Umar uh, ibn Abdul Aziz. Because uh, remember, Umar Abdul Aziz was considered amongst the followers, even during his time, which was just around the turn of the century. There were still some Sahaba, there were still some companions, although the majority had gone. But it was a time which was needed for that hadith to be uh, compiled. So you can see knowledge expanded, riches also expanded uh, as well. And with that, we end um, the, this section on the, or this lecture. It's a very brief overview of the Umayyad uh, dynasty. And um, uh, inshallah, in the next lecture, we'll be talking about the next uh, dynasty, which is the Abbas, the Abbasid, although I think we're going to be discussing that over two lectures because that is a much longer period and also much more issues uh, arose uh, there. Uh, one point that I didn't mention, which is that uh, as uh, Marwan, uh, the second Marwan, who's also known as the donkey, um, he was overthrown by the Abbasid. Now the Abbasids, they started to basically round up any remaining Umayyads. Uh, and they, I mean, they betrayed them basically. There was a treacherous act said to them, look, you know, there's a pardon, there is an amnesty, just hand yourselves in, etc." So everybody came, instead of giving, being granted amnesty, they were all executed. Why did they do that? Because they didn't want these people to have do want people to have a figure which they can rally behind and then over overturn the Abbasid, which we will talk about. In fact, the first leader of the Abbasid, his uh, name was effectively the slaughterer, or the but not not quite the butcher, but the slaughterer, uh, and he killed so many people. But anyway, if you can see this guy called Abdul Rahman here, Abdul Rahman, who is the grandson of Hisham uh, ibn Abdul Malik. He managed to run away to Al Andalus and he continued the Umayyad dynasty in Andalus because the Abbasids, they didn't, you know, as we can see, the Abbasids had such a vast area, it's difficult to control everything. So he actually established or re established the Umayyad dynasty in Andalus and it remained Umayyad until, you know, for the next seven centuries or so uh, and uh, that became the Umayyad dynasty in 
uh, Al-Andalus, in Qurtuba, and Garnata, and etc. Which again, we have a separate lecture about that, inshallah, in due course. So he ran away uh, and he managed to continue uh, there. Okay, we're going to end there, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, we have.